We are here, we are here, we are here on this amazing day. Okay, everyone, this is Cam Jones, FX Daily Analysis. Disclaimer, I am not a professional. Please watch these videos at your own risk. These videos are for entertainment purposes only. Thank you. Friends and family on Discord and Telegram. Families and friends will prosper. Let's pick up a business. Okay, everyone, we are marking up GBP NZD. <clears throat> We're going to start off with market structure. Let's take a look at what's going on in the market. Okay, so what I see here is the market started off back in November of 2001. Uh, the market pushed right up into higher highs, <clears throat> into a level of resistance, I should say. Uh, from there, the market dropped. We see a pattern here, which is engulfing. The red engulfed the green one. From there, that caused the market to drop. It broke that support went to a new area, new areas of support. It went back up to retest previous areas of resistance. Wasn't able to break. We can tell by that wick at the top. Got the engulfing pattern here. The red closed below the green, showing that the market pushed down, which it all happens. When you see this, there's a chance the market can push down. We got the full confirmation after the second one here, and the market push. Uh, from there, the market broke area of support. I see that the market did a little something here, like a slight downtrend, came back up to retest previous areas of higher highs. So there's something going on in here, market pushed up. We see two wicks at the top showing that market may not push up higher, so market may be losing momentum. The next candle was a, after the red one was a uh, green doji, doji standing for meaning indecisive, so there was a chance that the market uh, wasn't going to go further down anymore, but it did. It ended up getting a more complete of a push, and the market pushed down to new areas of lower lows. From there, the market went right back up to retest previous areas of resistance, and it kind of went right back down to support to come right back up. We have another pattern here. We got the engulfing pattern. Just note, we do not have the engulfing pattern. We have a, it would try to do engulfing pattern. We got a doji, but if the doji wasn't here, it could have probably engulfed it. So it showed that the market is going to come down. And then this candle got indecisive. So it, it, we didn't know the market was going to go up or down. It wasn't able to break the resistance. So the market shot right back down. Came back to previous areas of support. From there, the market uh, went back into, broke through the resistance to come right back down. Okay, so what the market did, after it broke the support, it created new levels or lower lows. It came all the way down to the bottom here. So what, it, what happened here, the, mar the market just basically consolidated. So we, once we would have seen this pattern, and this would have been a confirmation right here. So this candle would have showed us losing momentum because we got that high uh, wick at the top closed out here. Excuse me close out the bottom here and then the market pushed down uh, this candle confirmed that it engulfed that one so you can probably took entry here or you probably could have seen something going on here and we would have took it down so either that first red candle that second red candle would have helped us out with uh, taking entry for that sell we would have went down to new low areas of uh, support and from there we would have been down here we would have seen this and took it up for the buy we would have sold we would have buy and sold again and again and then once we got here uh, we, we would have caught this engulfing pattern the green engulfed the red one doji two dojis at least two red dojis right here green one engulfed one two three candles closed out and the market pushed right back up broke through support we see two wicks at the top or two candles at the top two long wicks showing that the market may lose momentum and it did and then it followed up by a drop in the market. So this is the lowest the market has ever been in 
Bitcoin. This is back in 2016. So we see that the market is trying to get up out of here to line up back into that um, consolidation phase that it was in. So it went to lower lows. They look like a pattern here. I'm going to demonstrate what I see. So this area here. So this area here shows that the market may be going up. And what we see is there's a double bottom. So this will be the first leg. This will be the second leg. This will be the third leg. And this is the fourth leg. And this will create the formation of double bottom. After we see a double bottom, most likely, most of the time, a retest does happen. And then either market goes up or down. Most of the time it goes up. The market um, retested. <clears throat> it wasn't able to break here because if so, it wouldn't, it wouldn't went up right away and broke the resistance. But it didn't. The market actually, the retest came here. So once we would have caught this retest, we could see the engulfing pattern, the green engulfed the red. We would have took entry and then we would have rolled it to new areas of high highs. We would have caught this breakthrough of this resistance. And then from there, the market is basically just consolidating, trying to break up to new areas of high highs. There's a few patterns in here. So it shows me that the market may be going up. And I'm going to show you guys what I see. So when we get to this area here, there's a whole, it's it's lower lows here. It broke through and it now it's kind of consolidate. Within all this kind of consolidation, there's formations inside of them. And I'm going to demonstrate what I see. But I said this the first time. <clears throat> this is the first one. Got the retest here. The market pushed up. It basically consolidated sideways, and it had go another formation here. Double bottom. One, two, three four and you see this red doji here this is the confirmation that the market may not go up so we should be looking for a retest it wasn't the first doji the second one came down to retest previous areas of support so it retested something in he right here in this level it was a perfect touch market came down did the retest so after the retest we know the market is going to shoot up we were seeing this the market shot up to new areas because it would have broke through for a little bit it would have broke through that resistance but it didn't close out above our resistance line it actually closed out under <clears throat> showing that because we see these long wicks the market may be losing momentum to go back down exactly what it did the market went right back down and we see a retest here it came up retest something in here and it's coming up so oh I actually just did another formation I didn't even notice I did it <clears throat> and that's the um, the power of marking up because when you start marking up you start seeing things that you thought that was there may not be there and when you start playing around you start seeing new things number formation double bottom one two three four so something's going to go in here we're looking for a retest I don't know when a retest is going to happen I could push up higher and then come down for a retest it can retest now it can retest previous areas to support here it can break this area here and retest but at the end of the day we do can see that we are in some type of uptrend so that's market structure for you for us we are figure we figured out um, market structure we did figure out the overall trend which is an uptrend oh it looks like an uptrend so far once you go down a time frame, we can definitely see if it's going to still be in that uptrend. If not, then we'll, we'll sit around the direction. So we can see that our we are in a uptrend. So what we're going to do is grab our trend line, grab the lowest low. <clears throat> I'd actually like to slice mine through on the monthly. On this time frame, uh, next we're going to head. So we got over a trend. We're going to head down and look. For, we're going to head to price action and we're going to look for SR lines. Price action is the last candle all the way to the right, which is right here. This time it's green. So what we see is we're going to grab our SR lines. So first thing we do is look for price action. You look over to your left to see what price is trying to break. It's trying to break this peak right here. So is that he's trying to get to this peak before it gets to new levels?
if price if price doesn't go back if price go down it will go as far as probably this peak here this inverted peak there's something going on in the middle here so I feel like I want to drop this here and that left looks clean so we had the market pushed up, came back down, pushed back up to the top, came back down, pushed back up to the top, came back down, pushed up that to the top, retested, came back down. This the um, double bottle formation. Market pushed the high highs, came back down to this area here, came back up, came back down, came back up. So we can see that it clearly looks clean. We are going to add SR lines within our SR lines. We're going to do a top-down analysis. We are looking for peaks. What we're going to do is go to price action. Never mind, not price action. We're going to work in between our SR lines. We are looking for peaks. So I see one here. There's one here, this is an inverted peak here, so if I'm working my way top up, I can catch this. Um, there's another one here, there's a, a peak here. And for me to find this, I had to slide over to the left. I knew something was wrong because I seen a whole bunch of gaps in space. I still feel like it's not enough. I feel like I need to add some more. I don't see anything yet. I look like something's going on here. I'm gonna check on a low, I'm gonna check down I'm going to check down to the left to see if I see some type of peak or inverted peak that will respect. Ah, perfect. Right here. So, I had to come all the way down to this area to grab this area here. So, I can grab it up maybe to the top here. But I feel like that's going to be too close unless there's two things going on. So, I will leave that there. And also, I would add probably a peak here and I'm fine with that uh, next let's go back to price action and let's take a look at to see if we can find a pattern <clears throat> so lowest lows market pushed up high highs we can see that respecting our trend line here came out of a hole here Let's grab our rectangle. So we're going to grab the price action candle. We're going to grab the highest high, which is the wick. We can draw it down all the way to the bottom. Let's grab. Let's grab the lowest low. So the last SR line. So I feel like something's going to go down in this area once we go down the time frame, and we may be able to see a pattern. Also, I would like to explain what we what we trade. We trade the breakout pattern. The breakout pattern is basically. Let's say we have three SR lines. What we do is price would start at the bottom. We say we're in an uptrend. We look for price to head to our SR line. We won't take entry. We wait for the market to break out. Once it breaks out, the market will come back to retest. Once the market retests, we'll be looking for entry. Once again, we won't be taking entry here. We wait for the market to push up. Excuse me. We wait for market to push up. We won't be taking entry here. We'll wait for it to completely break out of our resistance line. Once it do, we wait until it comes back to our resistance line, which turns into support. And then we look for entry to take it to our next SR line. So let's go back to uh, price action and let's take a look at what's going on. So I feel like we can... If we go down the time frame, we could find some type of pattern that's going on in the market. And let's see if we can identify what's going on. So the only thing I see here I 
actually don't even see a pattern. <clears throat> so if we go down the time frame here, it could be something here, but it definitely we can call it right now a single bottom. A single bottom happened, the market pushed up. This is the retest, and the market pushed up higher to new levels. Once the market reached higher highs, we wait for the market to come back down to retest previous areas, which it did, before it shot up again. And then it tried once again for a retest the bottom of that um, support here, and then we got that final push up to the top. So this is the highest highs. So <clears throat> when we see this, look, like I did, did a formation of a pattern, like a double bottom. Uh, could be sideways double bottom on the way up. Uh, retest came back here, turned to another double bottom, pushed up to the top. That's why I said sometimes you have to mark up to see certain things. And I just found what I thought was a single bottom, and I see a double bottom here. The market pushed up. So, what I do know is once the market pushed up from that double bottom, it'll push up to new areas of high highs. And then from there, it's going to be a waiting game. So, we have to wait for the market to come back down into our rectangle for us to uh, figure out what the market is going to do. Is it going to break up to new levels, to new levels of higher highs, or is it going to, you know, double back and go down? <clears throat> so just give you guys an ex example what the market can do. Let's say if there's so much stability here where the market may not be able to break a area of resistance, the market can come up it can come back down to retest, so this will be the first touch. It can come back up again for a second touch. Let's say it don't break, it come right back down. It can try for a third time, create that um, double bottom formation, shoot all the way back up, retest something in here, and then go, and it is gone. If not, you gotta remember too, the market can do the opposite and it can go down. It can remember it reached higher highs, and whenever the market is at high highs, the goal for the market is to go back to lower lows to retest previous areas down here to come back up. So what the market can do is we know that we got the put big push from the top, high highs, it could come right back down, retest something in here, it could come back up to see if it could break through and it may not and if it don't it can just completely drop back down to respect our trend line that we're on and it'll do something in here and then we'll see that pattern to take it up for the buy but once it start breaking this last SR line to the bottom and it comes if it comes all the way back down and breaks our last SR line or it breaks our trend line first that means the market may turn around so we were looking for it to go at least to this level or this level and once every we get here it's going all the way down if we don't see that turn around to go back up so <clears throat> if we was taking in a trade if we seen some type of pattern this is not an existing trade this is not a truthful trade at the moment but if, if we see the pattern form itself let's say the market comes back down to our red line excuse me our blue line of support we will be able to take it up to the new next SR line, which will be here. <clears throat> Let's go down a time frame, tighten up our SR lines. Excuse me. Let's go down a time frame. Let's tighten up our stop loss. So. So this is an amazing trade everyone, GBP NZD, if the pattern did happen and the market pushed down and came back up, it looked like it's got to do another push up to the top. So I just went down a time frame, I actually see something else. So what I see is this, and this may not happen, it's just, I'm just used to seeing certain things. Part, so the market went up to high highs, we don't have that full leg to show that it's coming down, but what it looked like it tried to do is form that first leg of that um, that W, that double bottom, second leg, third leg, fourth leg, and I always said when you see that double bottom, look for a retest, and here it comes, doji doji, look like he's retesting something. It could come down as I don't know how far, but once you see that engulfing pattern, we take the entry, boom, take it all the way up to the next SR line, give us a beautiful 118 pips. Amazing trade, everyone. Can't beat it, thank God. So, um, <clears throat> for you guys to figure out what's gonna, what pattern is going to form in here, what you're going to do is go to Google. You guys would type in Forex.
pattern cheat sheets. That's Forex pattern cheat sheets and go to images and just review all the images of how many patterns you can there's a lot of patterns i think there's a top i did some homework on it a while back i think it was like a top 60 70 patterns that people use uh, that you, i think you i think it said 60 70 patterns that's commonly used in the market but then in total i think it was like two or three hundred but anything above 60 you probably wouldn't see that from my experience i have i seen those on like exotic pairs so when you get to exotic pairs you start seeing um, different patterns but when you when you're dealing with the basic um, majority of the um, forex pairs you kind of see the same thing each and every time <clears throat> that's why I want you guys to get acquainted to looking at the market and also looking for patterns because once you see the pattern that's the trade is golden Okay, everyone, this is Cam Jones FX Daily Analysis. Thank you for watching and thank you for your attention.